Yes, Peter. Oh, I can. I, I thought I had my three Sunday and I, I was No, gonna, you're good. Um. Okay, so let me try to think about everything. I'm just very thankful because I've got this friend I graduated high school with. You know, the Lord gave me some some prophetic words about her son and shared them with her. She received them. I've been able to share other things with her. So I'm just, you know, keep praying for open doors. I I, I want to eventually invite her to this church. I'm not sure how that's going to be taken. My, actually, she was friends with my kid for a while on Facebook because I think um, you're – Granddaughter's friends with her daughter. Okay. One of them. I'll, I'll we'll we'll talk. She lives over in your neighborhood. Okay. But um anyway, so I'm just you know keep praying for open doors there. Yeah, it, you know this is somebody that I don't know if she's ever in her life in the church, mm -hmm. ever. Maybe get married possibly, but other than that, I don't I don't know that <laughs> she's ever been in church in her whole life. I mean, she posted something the other day on Facebook. She's like, I got a good heart for this mouth of mine. And I, I responded back. I said to her post, I said, it happens to all of us. Mm -hmm. And and she really appreciated that. Cause I mean, we're all human. I'm so sorry. I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Just came to mind. Um, yeah. Uh, for Cindy, uh, about an hour before I got home from work, she has some boiling water on the uh, stove. And uh, she reached up to grab something and popped it and then just splashed on her foot. She's got a second degree blisters around her ankle. It's a pretty good size one. Yeah. Uh, she's able to get up the wall and get some stuff to put on a bike and stuff like that. Lady, my, our grandson, she homeschooled him. He was there, so he helped her and um, stuff like that. So she's got her foot up right now. And it was second degree burns. It's not third degree, but just pray for no infection and try to set it or anything else like that. So. Uh, yeah, Peter. Um, uh, reminding me, uh, we need prayer for wisdom and how to best homeschool Jacob. It's it's not. I mean, we knew it wouldn't be easy, but it's been more of a challenge than we realized. Um, prayer for healing for Jacob and I, who are both kind of battling little illnesses, and uh, prayer for our friends David and Gala. They've been here a few times. They're going to. Oh, they're right here. Uh, they're going to Arizona come Friday. You know that they'll, <laughs> you know, not just prayer for protection, but that they'll they'll find their right place of ministry down there. You know, it'd be awesome if they could somehow meet up with Darlene and Dan. Yeah, that would yeah. be amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. We have a couple from this church that winters down there. Yeah. Um, so I would like to ask for my friend Shelly, uh, prayer for my friend Shelly. She is. Um, coming out of four years of struggling with severe mental illness. I don't know if she said she has a head injury. Mm -hmm. So she's, she describes as coming out of the darkness into the light. And she's going through a divorce. She's having to find a new place to live. And so she's, we've been reconciled after 20 years apart just this last, this week. And um, just really want to pray for her. She's open to Jesus. She is, you know, I, and it's so funny because 20 years ago before she moved away, and I honestly didn't even remember this, but I had gone to her house and prayed for angels around her wow. house um, before they had even talked about moving. It was when I first came to the Lord. And, of course, I was very zealous, and I think it, they were a little bit put off at the time. But she said, Suzanne, those angels have been with me and kept me alive wow. Awesome. Wow. for 20 years. She goes, and they're still with me, and they still surround me. She goes, I want you to come back to my house now and pray again. Um, so she's very open to the Lord. Um, a lot of healing that needs to happen for her emotionally, mentally, physically. A lot of oppression that I can just see that she's been through. Um, but I'm just so glad and so thankful that the Lord has brought her back into my life when there are no accidents in the Lord. There are no coincidences that she lives three miles down the road from me. That's right. So, awesome. I'm um, very excited to um, reestablish that relationship and just have someone to pour into, the love of God into, and just watch him. She's going to be a testimony of his grace, and I'm so excited for that. Lord. Yeah, Peter. Sorry, I've used up my three again tonight. Um, <laughs> just that Jamie and I, this next week, when we're away on this business trip, that the Lord would have his way with our business, and we'd make the right contacts and everything. We, we just... We put so much money in this business not to make any money, and it's been because of fear. It's been because of all of these things that come against us, and we just we need the right encouragement, right people this next week. Okay. Yeah. Uh, pray for Pastor. Mm -hmm. he yes. He got the eye surgery, and then I haven't heard anything. Uh, I'm believing everything. <coughs> and and he had a dental surgery. procedure, I think, too, that yesterday or today. Was it dental or eye surgery? We had both. He had both. Yeah. Well. 
Yeah. I knew about the cataract. I didn't know about the dental. Yeah, yeah, because I I don't remember if it was a root canal or something he was having done this week too. Yeah, I I thought that was last week or something. No, I thought it was this okay. week. Anyway, I, that's he, a lot yeah. of work, Kevin. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, you need to be home and rest. Okay. So, <laughs> so yeah, pray for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a prayer request. Um, my son Sean has been dating this girl who professes to be uh, a Wicca. Oh. And it's, I talked to um, Sean tonight saying that I wanted to have pizza Friday night, invited him. I said, you can bring Jackie if you want. He goes, well, I don't know. He goes, we kind of hit a hiccup. And I thought, and so I said to him, I go, I didn't know she had a problem with David and I or what. And he said, no. He said, he goes, you're not the problem. I go, okay. I go, how can I help you? He goes, you can't. And so I, I just thought that was interesting. I, I, don't, I don't want to pray. Uh, I don't want to pray for the wrong. I, 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 I can't bring myself to pray that they break up. Of course, in my heart, that's what I would like to see, you know, he was he was raised in a Christian home, and he's he's uh, walked away. I I was bold with him on Facebook the other day. He said he was he he's a male right, so he's up there in God's country anyway. And he uh, he was real close to the edge. And he was I was just seeing if the gods were protecting me, and I put in a message on there. I go, the one and only God protects you every day. Amen. And you know, and he go, and so then he texts back. He goes, "Yeah, yeah," and that was all that was said about that. And I, I just pray that that God just reaches down and grabs a hold of his heart and speaks to him. Amen. You know, he's one of the. I hate to single that out by adoption, but you know, the one boy that passed away, he was the youngest of the three we adopted, and then John, the oldest one, he's in jail right now, and then there's Sean, and I just feel like, um, I, I don't know if this is because of the hands of this girlfriend, Jackie, but it's just very, very evident <coughs> that Satan is just having a wonderful, fun time, and, and <laughs> you, you can just see it, when I mean, you kind of step back and look at it, you know, you know that's you know that's exactly what it is, and and you know they came from um, their biological mom was into she was part Indian, and so they have that going against them. And you know sometimes I'm going, God help! I I really I don't I really don't know how how to pray best for them that the prayers would be would be answered. You know, I I'm probably talking too long, but no, I, no, I, I did yeah. I, I did say to John I went visiting in jail on Sunday and I go, you know, I go, I came down to this church a few weeks ago and I go, the pastor prayed for me and I go, I needed a permanent vacation from my headspace. You know, because with the death of Trey, you know, my head was just driving me nuts, all these thoughts and stuff that was coming through. And I go, he prayed for me, and I go, it left. He goes, Ma, he goes, who could pray for me like that? So it would leave. I go, ask, I go, ask God to be the only one that's that's in your head. Mm -hmm. And and I go, you you can you can do that. Mm -hmm. And you know, of course everything's through a, a telephone when they're in jail, but I'm going I don't I don't know that I don't know how really to reach them. And my youngest son, he's he's a Christian and him and his wife and baby they they kind of distance themselves from the family. And I just want to say to him that's probably a good idea. You know, because I because I want everybody to be safe and and their spotties. And then of course, you know, I can say all this, but I'm taking off as of Saturday. Doesn't mean I'm, you know, I'm still going to be praying for him. I'm still as close as a phone call, you know. Right. We don't see each other on a, a daily basis 
usually anyway. And you know, so I'm just going. I, I just want. I just want direction from God, and I I want prayer that He can He can call His children yeah. to Him. And sometimes, sometimes when we're in the darkest of places, we need a change of venue. And sometimes in order to really hear and to really see, we need to change our locations, like physically. And I know sometimes it's a vacation, sometimes it's a visit, sometimes, but like literally changing the zip code and going somewhere else, suddenly the pressure, the darkness, the oppression, you leave it behind. And even if it's just for a minute, I believe you're going to get divine direction the minute you leave the zip code. And well, and, and like when Jack is around, I know David is great about about praying before he <coughs> walks, sets foot in the house, and you know, and and I'm going it, when she's there, you can just feel uh, what do you call it? Oppression. It, it's just like out and out swords and guns warfare. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You said, Oh, okay. And, yeah, and you know, I've there's going to be a lot. Yeah, and I've never really. Lot. <laughs> I've never Sarah really. Was oh, yeah. I've never really sat down and and witnessed her. She knows. She knows how I believe. You know, <coughs> last Christmas when she was there, who was it that told me I needed to not change anything I did? And so. Sure. We, yeah, so we prayed for the meals, and we always read the Christmas story before we opened presents. Mm-hmm. We did all that, and and I heard her. You could see that she was paying attention and listening. And Sean says that she was raised in a. <coughs> I don't know how Christian of a home, but you know, she did go to church. Oh, so I, was, I think. Yeah. So, I did too. Yeah. Because uh, they. What happens is they reel you in because they make you believe that any, everything that you do is, is because you love, because you love other people, because you want to be one with everyone and you want to be one with the earth, but it doesn't end up being like that. It ends up you doing terrible things to other people and you're not even realizing that you're doing it. There's a slow descension into darkness. And by the time you get down that deep, you're blind. You're well. You're not only blind, but you believe that you are so awful that nothing, mm-hmm. nothing or no one could ever forgive you. Mm-hmm. And it for me, God actually didn't use me to, to do a miracle on my daughter, and that's what brought me out. Mm-hmm. That's what brought me out because I have seen demons in my presence, and they are the scariest mm-hmm. thing I've ever seen in my life. Mm-hmm. I brought it to me. Mm-hmm. There is nothing more terrifying than realizing that, number one, you did that, but because you did that because you were a pawn in Satan's game. Well, and, and see, the other thing, Sean was real questioning <clears throat> after my son Trey passed away, you know, wanting to know, do you think he made it to heaven? You know, what a, you know, what about this or that? And I, I might be wrong, but I think he's on the fence. I'm not sure you think that way. You think he's on Jack's side. I mean, he goes to these Indian powwows and they created the sun, the moon, the sky, the earth, everything. They created creation I instead mean, of the yeah. creator. <laughs> yeah. You know, he's dead. Yeah. You know, I've known him long now. No, I Wake understand that. Time I, 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 right. I totally, I totally get that. I totally you know, understand that. That's how they com- connect with everything that's right. right. Good with every, right. whatever, wherever. Right. And it gives them power. Right. No, no, and I, I totally know. I totally and, understand. And like we had invited them over uh, a couple of weeks ago on a Sunday night for supper, and she had some kind of panic attack, anxiety attack, or whatever. Well, Sean, he, he never dealt with anybody that had those. You know, I was, I guess, kind of straight laced when they were kids. And you have a problem, you go pray about it, and you get over it. You don't have, you don't have a panic attack. Is this at your house? Yeah. They never showed when, up. Yeah, yeah. We, nobody ever had an anxiety attack when they were alone. Yeah, and they and they and he called and said, <coughs> "Well, they couldn't come." What did he say? Because she was having. A yeah, crisis. because she was having a crisis. And and so well, I said to Sean tonight when I talked to her, I go, "So is David and I a problem with her?" And he goes, 
No, because we just are going through our own hiccup, and we're going, okay. You know, Christmas dinner, Thanksgiving dinner, I get my plate, and I go sit there. <laughs> One time she's there, she interacts with the family and everything. And I don't talk to her. I don't, you know, some people think I'm kind of rude because I don't talk to anybody, but I'm sitting there great. Well, I will tell you from my personal experience, um, the thing that changed me was not because I just saw a miracle in front of me, not because God used me for this amazing miracle in front of me that happened to deal with healing my own child, but it was. <coughs> it was the immense pressure of love all around me. Like, I couldn't get rid of it. I couldn't shake it. And I was adopted. And I always felt unloved. Yeah. I always felt tossed aside. I always felt like I was never good enough. I was a second-hand citizen because, I, you know, my, my dad didn't want me. He just mm-hmm. threw me off to my, you know, abusive mother. And so I had to live this life thinking that's what I deserved. But... It was at that very moment in time that I literally felt just wrapped in something I had never felt in my life, never had felt in my life, that I, I really feel just, it, it unhardened my clay. It made my clay soft again, and that's what it's gonna take. It's gonna take, it's gonna take the deepest of love ever. Well, I know. I called her up one day, and I said, I, you've been on my heart. I go, how is school going? Because she's in college. And she told me, and I go, I know you don't believe like I do, but I go, I want you to know. I go, the God I believe in that is the only God, I go, I pray for you. And, she's, and she said, thank you for that. Yeah, you know, kind of the end of right. the conversation. And I decided, ah, sometimes you just kind of need to be out there with it. Mm-hmm. And I know that my God is stronger than whatever all this jazz is she has going on. Mm-hmm. Well, it's because she's that. following, she's following, de- following defeat. She's following lies. She's following deceit. She's following death. She doesn't know that. She has no idea that's what she's doing. She thinks she's following life. Well, she told Jackie and Sean that Satan stole Trey and took him straight to the pits of hell, basically. And Jackie looks so surprised. Like, how did you know that? You know, you know we were, she's put on Facebook almost curses against Trey's wife now. You know, and I'm going, oh. I, I read that and I go, oh, I don't know anything about this, this <coughs> junk. But I go, that? And I, I told him, I go, I go, let me read this to you. I go, doesn't that sound like a curse to you? And he goes, yeah, it does. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I just I just feel like our family is being bombarded with yeah. with it's trying Satan. To be apart. It's trying to be tore apart and you know, I'm going you know your kids are gonna grow up and they're gonna go their own way and it's gonna be probably different than how you've taught them. But I was I was just kidding. Can can we just like I'm just gonna. Can you guys come up here and come on guys around? Yeah. I want to circle around them, physically circle yes. around them, pray. Like as a church, we're called to pray for one another. Yes. We're, we're, yes. we're to live life together. And when you said you feel like you're under attack, and that's when we lift arms around you and we say no more. And so. Can we just gather in a circle around these guys? Mm-hmm. We're just going to pray nothing but love and peace and joy. Jesus. Heavenly Father, right now, Jesus. the blood of Jesus and the word of their testimony is the power, is the power of the essence of the gospel. Jesus, that these curses that have been spoken against this family Jesus. are silenced and broken right now, washed away by the blood of Jesus. That any curses spoken right now go back to the pits of hell where they came from. Yes. That the lies are silent. Yes. That the deceit, that the plans of the evil one are done. They're, they're, the enemy is hung in his own trap, Lord. Amen. Just like Haman hung in the gallows he prepared in his backyard. Yes. Lord. Yes. The, the, the traps that have been yes. set for this family. It is the destroyer who is destroying. 
It is a destroyer who is set in these traps. And then you give this couple, David and Gayla, you give yes. them divine yes, wisdom, yes, 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 yes. divine favor, to cut through the yes. darkness and yes. shine the yes. light of Jesus Christ yes, Amen. everywhere they go. Yes, every step, yes, every, every, every way. You light yes, up the way, Lord. Lord. Yes, Lord. You light up the way and you pour out your love. Yes, Lord. You pour out revelation. Yes, you pour out wisdom. Yes, you open your word. Yes, Lord. You open their ears and eyes yes, to see you everywhere yes. around them. The yes, chariots of fire, the angels of protection yes, everywhere around them. Yes, Lord. Around their family, Lord. Those who they have taken yes, in. Lord. Yes, Lord. Those who they have adopted and given their name yes, to. Yes. They yes, are covered by the yes, blood Lord. of Jesus. They are covered. They are grafted in to the family of Jesus Christ through the blood and through that spirit of adoption. And that every one of those children will say, I was Father. Yes. Jesus. Yes. They will know you. The yes. seeds that have been planted yes. will come and bear good fruit. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Come and bear good fruit. You bring the water, Lord. You bring yes. the people in their yes. lives that will water the seed. Mm -hmm. You bring the sunshine yes. to their life. You bring yes. life and hope yes. and peace and joy. Yes. And they hear the name of Jesus everywhere they go. And they know that you alone are the source yes. of life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Of life. Amen. And love, Lord. Let your grace abound. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where sin abounds, grace does much more abound. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Much more abound, mm -hmm. Lord. Mm -hmm. The spirit of oppression must be gone in the yes. name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. These attacks cease in the name yes. of Jesus. Yes. Those are no more. Jesus. 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 Thank you, Lord. 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 Right on it. Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon formed against you is accomplished. Will prosper. Mm -hmm. And every tongue that rises up against them, mm -hmm. I will condemn. Yes. And I declare their righteousness of you, Lord. And I decree it in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, I was going to say, if you ever want to talk to somebody about what it's like for your kids not seeing for years, talk to Mike. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. I just read Isaiah 49. Basically, I will contend with those who contend with your children. And your, I will contend with those who are working against mm -hmm. you and your children, and he promised the return of it. Oh, it took 20, almost 22 years. Uh, I've been restored to all my children. My older son, my younger son, uh, Marilyn, we talked, but we're not completely connected back together. But that's just like, the rest of them are connected back together after 20, 21 years. They get to see each other seven years. I can't even know what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. you know, I saw my son three weeks ago. Yep, kind of shocked. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, I was at his house. Yep, I had to start something. I gave him a birthday card in my mom. And ready for it in 1993. Right? Yeah, see, 1993 is what last yeah, time I got to see it. Yeah. 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 Try and reconnect. And, uh, she's faithful. I realized I have 49 and play because it's a promise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 I am too. Yeah. Yeah. I am too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and Sarah and her husband teach classes in Waukee every Monday night. We do. On how to eat right. We do. That's a bad And you get food too. You do. You get life. You get life. Do we have a clicker? Yes. I just have one quick thing. Sure. Oh, yeah. Sure. Sorry I came in late. No, you're fine. I was delivering winter coats. You were right on time. Delivering winter coats. I was delivering winter coats. Awesome. To uh, a family who needed them, but um, we uh, there's been some fun stuff going on in our building. So two rooms were taken over by uh, the Waukee Baptist Church close closet. So every Wednesday from noon to two, they give away free coats, scarves, hats, gloves, clothing, 
And then the first Saturday of every month, it is from 10 to 2. And it's all free. You don't wow. have to fill anything to work out. You don't have to sign anything. You just come in and you look through the racks and you can get stuff for yourself, for your children, your grandchildren, <coughs> your friends. And can we give you donations for that? Yes. Is it okay to bring in new stuff that's gently used? Or? Yes, it's all it's all, it's all, all donated clothing and okay. coats and stuff. I only ask that you just wash them first. Okay. Yep. Yeah. It's white. It's white. I haven't unpacked the winter coat box, but I do happen to know that there's quite a few in there that could use a good wash in a new home. Yeah, well, um, they, they had a, a pretty decent turnout. Um, today was the first time, and they, mm. they, they did the winter coats, and um, I had put it on a questionable Facebook page only because I know a lot of people ask for help on the people of Des Moines page. Mm. And uh, wow, the responses were really interesting, but um, <laughs> one, one person from that page actually showed up today. So awesome. there you go. That was, that was worth it. That was that was totally worth it. Mm. I just ignored everything else. So <laughs> um, anyway, that is out there. And then um, of course our classes start on Monday, so awesome. please come. Did you get the folder? Huh? Did you get the folder? Did I, did I? No. I don't want to pay fifty dollars. Okay. I, I did send you your sheet. Okay. Did you? I haven't gotten it yet. No, I have. I have to. I have to talk with Eric about it. Okay. So I'm. I'm. I'm actively searching for something that I can use for a podium. Okay. Is what I'm searching for, so that our speakers who volunteer mm -hmm. their time for these classes have something to kind of hold their notes at and do that. And all the junk I own, I have nothing. So. On <laughs> our music stand. Huh? Or music yeah, Maybe I might have to. <laughs> just, just to hold you over. Yeah, I might have to until we get something mm -hmm. figured out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think we're having soup for dinner on yeah. Monday. So. Thank you. Yes. Praise God. Um, I yeah, uh, as I told you, Suzanne, I have a lady that became a Christian because of uh, my witness on Facebook. Uh, she has some sort of. Uh, women's thing, either a uh, appendicitis or something. That's not what it's No, it's, I mean, what I'm saying, it, it's a... <laughs> she's a woman, <laughs> and she has a thing. <laughs> it's appendicitis or don't let her She's sick and things. needs prayer yeah. over it, certain okay. needs that she should, that I said that would make sure we couple of prayer. Okay. Is her name Kim? Is that right, James? Is it Kim? Yes. Okay, we'll pray for Kim. Okay. Anyone else? Well, I'm getting the let's go symbol. Um, okay, so for the announcements. Uh, Friday, November 10th. Yes, did you? Oh, you clicked. No, no, on. I'm just doing the announcements. I'm, um, I'm, I'm, I'm posing. <laughs> uh, Eastern Gate House of Prayer, Friday, November 10th. Women's Conference, Saturday, November next 11th. Day. The next day. Yeah. Oh, and I also invited the, the people that I give the coats to, her and her daughter, I invited oh, them to listen. So yeah. awesome. she sounds very interested in coming. Yeah. So that would be great. That would be great. Fantastic. And the following Sunday, very, very active November, a soup dinner here after church if anybody mm. is here for the service. I miss it all. Oh, you're going to miss all of it? I miss it all. Oh, uh, well. Mm -hmm. That's okay. I'm doing what I believe God's told me to do. Yeah, that's the most important thing. Yeah, um, so there's a sign up sheet in back. So uh, for anybody that wants to make some soup or some desserts or some bread, some man bread or whatever. Man bread. Like I'm just saying. For anybody that well, knows. in that case, I might just have to be disobedient. <laughs> man, man bread. We actually, one of our man really good friends who, who, well, this is a really great quick thing. I'm sorry. Um, he, uh, it's almost been one year. But uh, he called me, or his wife called me last year on Thanksgiving morning and said, can you please come over? He had been diagnosed <coughs> with incurable stage four prostate cancer. Wow. And um, I, I had informed her that summer that he would love me. I said, he doesn't know it now, but he's gonna love me. And um, he wanted absolutely nothing to do with me. He didn't want to talk to me. He didn't want to be around me or nothing. But um, I just prayed and God persisted. and. They called me a year ago on Thanksgiving morning, and we went over to their house, and we talked to him, and um, said, well, you can choose life or you can choose death. What do you want? And he says, well, I want life. So his tests, his cancer tests, his 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 points or whatever they, they 
do, I don't know what it is, PSA or whatever that yeah, is, yeah, yeah. was like 300 and something. Ooh. And uh, four weeks ago, it was 1.3. Praise the Lord. Nice and we just, we, we helped him change the way that he, like his perception about life and about food and how to take care of himself. Yes. And yes. now um, he, he, will, he will tell you that um, Eric and I are part of his cancer team because we helped him beat cancer. And he comes to these classes, but um, I just think it's great that a year ago he thought he was just going to die. And he's like thriving now. So that's awesome. I, I don't remember why, why I wanted to pray for him. He's not here. Roberto getting that diagnosis of type 2 diabetes, you know. I, I've been healed for over a year. I know Roberto can be healed, but I know how discouraging it is when you get that diagnosis. I know he needs to come on Monday so he can be surrounded by people who, like, love and care about him. Amen. 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 I've never had it. Um, so let's, um, let's, we'll just, we'll leave the prayers for when we're kind of in worship. We can pray because we've kind of already prayed together. So Ron, you want to come take an offering real quick? I will be fired from my job oh, if I don't. I know, right? I'm... <laughs> Make sure that. Rod, you want to ask blessings to the please? Make sure my phone's on. Father, it's a privilege to come in your house. Yes, yes. Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. We give you praise and honor. You're truly worthy of all praise. Mm -hmm. I just thank you. You have <coughs> done a mighty work in our midst. Yes, Lord. And I decree it, and I declare it, and I receive it for us all. And I ask you to bless this offering in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. There he seems like this. I'll show you when he gets home. Oh, okay. Purposely slow down. Okay. okay. Hey, you know what? You get more great you match. Hey, this is cool. Look at this. We go. Look at how high you can go. All the gray. All the gray. Oh, we're all gray. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah.
Thank you, Lord. Jesus, that when we have a thankful heart, the world looks so different. When we can look to you and turn our eyes to you, oh, the, the view is spectacular, Lord. And it puts things in perspective that this world never could, Lord. You have finished it all. And now you sit at the right hand of the Father, just waiting for us to come to you, to call on you, and to come and to, to know you and to be yes. like you. Thank you, Jesus. And whenever we call on your name, you're there with us to meet us. You never leave us. You never forsake us, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you first loved us, Lord. That you first loved us. That you called us each by name, Lord. Jesus, that we will rejoice and be glad because this is the day that you have made. Yes. Yes. That you have made. That you have redeemed the day. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. In yes. Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Thank you, worship team. Thank you. Yay. I know, I always feel funny saying that. Thanks, worship team. <laughs> Good job, worship team. <laughs> Whew. All right, so according to my husband, I have 15 minutes left. <laughs> so let's abbreviate a 45 minutes. 45 minutes. <laughs> uh, so, I know, right? It's like he's a schedule. So... And kids can be dismissed for Sunday school. Yeah. yeah, all the children must stay upstairs tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know. So Ecclesiastes chapter 3 tells us that there is a time for everything. That there is a season for everything. And there's good seasons, and there's not so good seasons in the life of a Christian. But everything is a season. And as I was thinking about everything I wanted to talk about tonight, I... It's always going through my notes, Jubilee, right? We are in the year of Jubilee of Jubilees. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and the Lord made some pretty big promises to us last December. Yep. And I'm waiting. And I know that when he promises, he's faithful to deliver. And so as I'm thinking about the Jubilee, there's some things. We're going to talk about how he established the Jubilee in the Old Testament, but it's, it's, it's the same today. These principles, these precepts are the same today. And I think that when we think about the seasons, everything changes. One day is never the same. One minute is never the same. We are never the same minute to minute. We are to be transformed from glory to glory, from moment to moment in our lives. And these seasons are to give us an opportunity to learn more about who Jesus is, to learn more about who we are, and to, and to be more clear and decisive in, our, in the purpose that he has created us for. Um, and one of my favorite parts of Ecclesiastes chapter 3 is after he talks about there's a season, a time appointed for everything, and a time for every delight and event or purpose under heaven. And he goes through, we all know these, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to uproot and harvest. But in, chapter, in uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11, he says, He has made everything beautiful and appropriate in its time. Everything <coughs> is beautiful. Now, I have a hard time sometimes wrapping my brain around how everything can be beautiful, but if we choose to look for the beauty in everything, it's a perspective, right? It's a perspective that we live life through. If we choose to seek, if we seek beauty, we're going to find beauty in everything. God redeems. He gives us beauty for ashes. The ashes aren't beautiful, but he, if you will see the beauty in the midst of the ashes, the beauty comes. Right? But when we're, when we're so focused on the ashes, the beauty can't come, right? So it's perspective. And in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 12, um, oh, sorry, uh, sorry, sorry, verse 11, I'm not done with 11. So he has made everything beautiful and appropriate in its time. He has also planted eternity, a sense of divine purpose in the human heart. It's a mysterious longing which nothing under the sun can satisfy except God. And boy, do people look everywhere else to fill that void except God. And only God. It's a God-shaped hole in every single one of us. And our children that turn away, that my son tells me that religion is a coping mechanism. That's 
his college education telling me that he mentally can't comprehend what he experienced and what he knows to be true as a child. And I have no fear because those seeds were planted. He has tasted and seen that the Lord is good. Yes. And if we teach our children that they have tasted and they have seen that the Lord is good, his goodness will come back to them at the appointed time. But I love this idea that eternity is planted within us, right? We are eternal beings <coughs> stuck in time, stuck in a physical place. We were not created for this world. This world was created for us, right? We weren't created for this world. This world was created for us. And so we don't fit here, right? Because this world no longer is, and we no longer are what we were created to be. Um, okay. Uh, da, 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 da. A mysterious longing which nothing under the sun can satisfy except God. Yet man cannot find out. He, man cannot comprehend. Man cannot grasp what God has done. His overall plan from beginning to end. God knows the beginning to the end. He's Alpha and Omega. He is beginning and end. He, his perspective is outside of time, but we're stuck in time, and we want to know what the next day holds. We want to know what prayer to pray that's going to be effective. We want to know how to walk the walk and please God and do all these things, but our human mind can't comprehend, but there's a part of us that can, right? It's a spirit that can. Um, I know that there is nothing better for them. This is Solomon talking to us. Solomon is pondering, right, humanity, and he's pondering these big thoughts. And Solomon says, I know that there is nothing better for man to do than to rejoice and to do good as long as they live. And also that every man should eat and drink and see and enjoy the good of all of his labor. It is the gift of God. We need to take the time to enjoy the fruits of our labor. And I feel like sometimes as Christians we're told we're not supposed to. Right? We're not supposed to just enjoy. Right? We're supposed to be working and giving. and We are, we are to find joy in all things. Um, and the other thing he said here that I thought was interesting um, is that history repeats itself. I, I think I have the um, message Bible version of Ecclesiastes chapter 3, but it says, That which has already been, and that which already, and that which will be, has already been, for God seeks what has passed by, so that history repeats itself, right? History repeats itself. You know, these principles and these precepts that we see in the Old Testament were manifest in Jesus Christ. They were manifest through the prophecies of the Old Testament prophets. They were manifest in the life of Jesus Christ. They were manifest in the, the early church, and they were manifest in the book of Revelation, right? Over and over we see history repeating itself. The truths of God are eternal, and those precepts and those principles, history repeats itself. And so all of that to say that I believe right now we are in a season of restoration and redemption. Yep. Jubilee is a season of restoration and a season of redemption. And if we don't understand the season we're in, then we won't be able to reap the benefits of the season that we're in, right? So I want to talk a little bit about, um, I'm going to talk from Leviticus, so I'm going to apologize in advance. It's not the most exciting of scriptures, but we're going to go through Leviticus. I'm going to try my best to kind of Susannaize the scriptures, give you a new translation, new version. Um, but we're going to go as quickly as I can, honey, Michael, through the year of Jubilee. So I'm going to start in Leviticus chapter 25. Um, and I'm going to start with, I'll start with verse 1. Um, go ahead and put up uh, Leviticus 25, verse 1 through 7. I'm going to read this because I think it kind of sets the stage. And the Lord spake unto Moses in Mount Sinai, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye come into the land which I give you, then shall the land keep a Sabbath unto the Lord. Six years thou shalt sow thy field, and six years thou shalt prune thy vineyard, and gather the fruit thereof. You're going to work for six years. But in the seventh year shall be a Sabbath. The whole year is going to be a Sabbath of rest unto the land, and a Sabbath for the Lord. Thou shalt neither sow thy field, nor prune thy vineyard. That which groweth of its own accord of thy harvest thou shalt not reap, neither gather the grapes of thy vine undressed, for it is a year of rest unto the land. It's talking about harvest and seasonal rotation, right? This is a crop rotation system God's putting in place here. But there's a very important principle in this crop rotation. 
And the Sabbath of the land shall be meat for you, for thee and for thy servant and for thy maid, and for thy hired servant and for thy stranger that sojourneth with thee, and for thy cattle and for thy beasts that are in thy land, shall all the increase thereof be meat. So God is making a promise. If you will work the land to the best of your ability for six years, in the seventh year, the land will give you what you need for your house, for your children, for your grandchildren, for your servants, for the foreigners that are staying with you that are passing through, for your cattle, for all of your livestock. He will give you more than enough for everybody and everything. Okay? Now, that's just normal jubilee. Sounds pretty good, right? I mean, we get more than enough. God promises you more than enough for a year of rest. Yes. That's pretty amazing. But he says, now wait. Now I want to talk to you about the year of Jubilee, the Jubilee of Jubilees, the seven times seven Sabbath, the 49th year. And in the seventh Sabbath of years, namely 49 years, then you shall sound the ram's horn everywhere on the 10th day of the seventh month, right? That's right before the Jewish New Year, the Day of Atonement. You're going to blow the ram's horn on the Day of Atonement. You're going to sound the trumpet throughout all the land. Everywhere, they're going to hear the horn. They're going to hear the trumpet blow. And you shall consecrate the 50th year. This is a whole year, right? A whole year. Another, another year, the 50th year. And you shall consecrate the 50th year and proclaim freedom for the slaves. How many times have we talked about setting the captives free? That has been a theme for us at this church. Breaking the chains, setting the captives free. This is a jubilee theme. This is a redemption. This is a restoration. And you shall consecrate the 50th year and proclaim freedom for the slaves throughout the land to all its inhabitants. It shall be a jubilee, a year of remission for you. Talk about cancer, right? A remission is a powerful word. Rolls it back. And each of you shall return to your own ancestral property that was sold to another because of poverty. I don't know how many of you guys have poverty in your lineage, but this is the year that that all rolls back. And each of you shall return to his family from whom he was separated by bondage. Any relationships broken? Any bondage come in between? This is the year that everything is given back. That 50th year shall be a jubilee for you. You shall not sow seed, nor reap what, no, you don't even have to pick what seed, receives itself, nor gather the grapes of the uncultivated vines, for it is the jubilee. It shall be holy to you, and you shall eat its crops right out of the field. Everywhere you go, walking around is provision. Everywhere we go, we just simply walk out. You hungry? Let's go take a walk, honey. Let's go grab some dinner. (laughs) Okay. So, um, I want to fast forward to, um, let's see. So, I, I think that there's something very significant about returning to your ancestral home. I've been thinking a lot about the portals that we talked about. There's a... There's a humble door of blessing that's open in this season, right? It's a humble door. It's not a door that's above us, that's upward, that we're not ascending to new heights, as we like to talk about from glory to glory, right? We think of going higher. This is a low door. This is a door of humility, but there is a door, and I believe it's the ancestral door, to to receive the blessings of our ancestors that our ancestors have prayed and left behind for us. And um, there's this ancestral property, right? So everything that the Jewish people, they're our ancestors now. We're grafted in, right? So all the way back to Abraham, that's our blessing. The blessing God spoke over Abraham is our blessing. The, God, the, the blessing that Isaac, Isaac spoke, that Jacob stole, we'll talk about that in a second. The, the blessing that Israel gave to his sons, those are our blessings, church. That's our lineage. It doesn't matter. We are adopted. We are grafted in. We are purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. We are family. You know, and I was adopted too. I don't know. That's just, there's so many people in our church that have been adopted. But you know what? Whether it's legal, whether it's blood, the blood of Jesus Christ makes it legal. Yes. And he makes it eternal. So I want to fast forward. Um, he talks a lot about how we're to treat each other, right? And I find it interesting that God in his law in a time of jubilee says, be careful how you treat one another. You shall not wrong one another, nor shall you fe- but you shall fear God with profound reverence. For I'm- and every time he talks about how you treat somebody, he says, fear me. So I think it's a warning, right? I am being good to you, be good to one another, right? I'm being good to you, be good to one another. Okay. Um, okay, so verse 18, Leviticus chapter 25, verse 18 and 19. 
Therefore you shall carry out my statutes and keep my ordinances and do them, so that you may live securely on the land. Then the land will yield its produce, so that you can eat your fill and live securely on it. Okay. So, in order to access the Jubilee blessings, you have to carry out his statute and keep his ordinances, right? Well, the good news is that those 666 laws and ordinances that the Jewish had to keep, Jesus gave us two, right? We have one, well, actually, we have one law that we're to follow, the law of love, right? Because Jesus told us very specifically um, in... Uh, John, I'm getting out of order with my scriptures, I'm sorry, in Luke chapter 10, verse 27, love the Lord thy God, right, with everything, and love one, love your neighbor as yourself. Luke 10, 27, he, and he answered saying, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, yes. and with all thy mind, mm -hmm. and thy neighbor as thyself. Mm -hmm. That's the only law that we have to follow to have access to the blessings of Jubilee. Now, back in the day, when Moses was telling the people, I don't know if at that time they had all 666 yet in Leviticus 25, but they were on their way to 666 laws that they were going to have to follow to access the blessing. And if you do these things, which Jesus kept and fulfilled the law, and he said, I give you the law of love, right? You love God and you love one another. You will live securely on the land, and the land will yield to you. It will give to you. The land will yield to you its produce so that you can eat your fill and live securely on it, right? More than enough. Now, it's not you working and working and working, and now it's a blessing. And this is a special blessing. In verse 20, 21, and 22, And if you say, what are we going to eat in the seventh year if we do not sow seed or gather in the crops? Then this is my answer. I will order my special blessing for you in the sixth year so that it will produce sufficient crops for three years. Right? When you are sowing in the eighth year, you can still eat the old things from the crops because eating the old until the ninth year when the crops come in. Now, this special blessing he talks about, and I wrote it, it's the blessing in capital letters, the blessing, right? This is the blessing um, that the, this is the blessing, a benediction, an invocation of good as of a father about to die. This is the blessing. This is the generational blessing. This is the, the blessing that Jacob deceived his father to steal from Esau. This is the blessing, right? This is the biggie, right? This is the blessing that God says, this is, this is the year we're in. Expect it. Expect the blessing everywhere you go. That's favor. It's harvest all around you. It's walking in and having what you need right there on sale, 55% off. Mm -hmm. I, that's a blessing, Praise right? Yes. Go in and, and, and the one thing you need, the grocery store fuel saver, 10 cents. Whoo, that's like treasure right there. I mean, just expect those little things. That's our blessings, church. Mm -hmm. Nothing is too small and nothing is too big for God. And the other thing I wrote down, the blessing is a now blessing. It's not a tomorrow blessing. It's not a next year, a next month blessing. It's a now blessing. Mm -hmm. You are blessed. You have received the blessing. Yes. I am blessed and highly yes. favored. Lord. Yes. We should walk around every day, every morning. First thing we say, I am blessed and highly favored. Yes, Lord. I am blessed and highly yes, favored. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord. This is the year of Jubilee, yes. and I am blessed and highly favored. Yes. Who can yes. I be a blessing for today? Yes. Who Lord. can I pour out your goodness to today? Yes. You have given me so much, Lord. Lord. Yes, Lord. Not only is my house and my children and my grandchildren and the generations are they provided for and secured. Who and the strangers? Who are the foreigners? around me that I can pour out your blessing, yes, who I can Lord. show your goodness to, who I can yes. tell about your goodness and how you provide. Yes, yes Lord. Yes, Lord. That's the kind of blessing. Mm -hmm. That's the Jubilee yes. blessing. The Jubilee of Jubilees. That's the blessing. Yes, Lord. It's a special blessing. Abraham, right? Genesis chapter 12. This is the blessing that God spoke over Abraham. That's the first time we see it in the Bible. It's the Abraham blessing. And it was to Abram before he was even Abraham. He wasn't even Abraham. There wasn't even a covenant yet that made him Abraham. But God spoke this blessing. He said, I'm going to bless you so much that you're just going to bless people everywhere you go. They're going to be blessed by having you around them. You're going to pass through those towns. Those towns are going to be blessed. I mean, Nathan's talked about this. 
and I'm an economics geek, so I think it's cool, but he changed the economy. When Abraham came to town, yes. the economy of that town changed. Peter, when you come to town, hmm. the economy changes. Amen. Because your blessings just flow. The, the, the streets open, the markets are open. Sir, wherever you go, there's blessings. Yes. There's blessings, right? We should expect it. Come on. This is the blessing that Esau gave up for a bowl of stew. Church, how many times do we give away our blessing for something like a bowl of stew? We go, Esau, how could you? Oh, he was so hungry, he was going to die. I've been hungry before. I felt like I was going to die if I didn't get some. But seriously, church, how many times do we give away our blessings? Do we just let it, just hand it over for something stupid? We trade it off so often. The blessing. Keeping up with the Joneses, right? <laughs> houses we can't afford. Cat I mean, we see it all around us. People in houses they can't afford, driving cars they can't afford, buying, you know, purses they can't afford. Can I get a name, man, ladies? No. Am I the only one that cares about designer purses? Anyway. Working at a job that consumes us. Talk about slavery. It's, it's a form of indentured servitude, right? Isn't it? It's a job that consumes us so we don't have anything left to give, right? We have nothing left. It just consumes us. And we sell ourselves for that paycheck, right? That hourly paycheck. Food. We give up our health for what tastes good or what's convenient. We hand over our health. Amen. Our time. TV sucks it up, get on Facebook, there goes an hour, get on the internet, reading the news, there goes another hour. These things, we give it up and we don't even realize we're doing it. Those things are stealing from us. Now, I'm not saying that any of that stuff is bad. None of that stuff is bad in moderation, but when it starts to steal from our life, when it starts to steal from us, when it steals from our relationships, when it steals from our health, when it steals from our time, you know, I'm getting to the point in my life where time is more valuable to me than money because I have so little time. You know, not that I got a ton of money, but I got enough to get by. But now that I'm not worried about money all the time, now it's my time. I don't have enough, right? We just give it away. We give it away. We give it away. That's all that we have, right? This is all about loving our brothers and sisters, right? This is about loving our brothers and sisters. So the next three sections of Leviticus 25, the law of redemption. This whole section talks about slavery. People that are in such a bad way that they literally sell themselves to their fellow countrymen. Yeah. We don't have slavery today, but minimum wage, people giving away their time for minimum wage, you know what I mean? I mean, there's different examples all the time. Healthcare, don't get me started on that, <laughs> <laughs> you know? So it, it's this introduction of slavery. And it's so funny because this whole section starts with, the land shall not be sold permanently because the land is mine, says the Lord. The Lord's starting to teach us some very important things that you don't own anything. I created everything that yes. is. I own everything that is. You are going to be the steward for a little while. You are going to be the one that watches over and protects it and brings the fruit of it. But you don't own it, right? And so this, this idea of ownership, he says, now wait a minute. Land can be bought and sold, but if you buy it, you're going to give it up in the Jubilee, right? You're going to give it back to who it really belonged to because they had hard times. They had to sell it. But poverty is a season. It's not forever. God's teaching us right here. It's a season. It's not forever. There's the seven-year Jubilee rules, and then there's the 50-year Jubilee rules, and we're in the 50 right now. And there's different rules if it's a fellow countryman or if it's a foreigner. There's different rules if your house is in a walled city. And my favorite part is there's special rules if you're in a city of the Levites. Because Levites are special. And guess what? We're Levites because we're kings and priests. We're called to be kings and priests. So the Levites, their land has to be returned. There's no way that they can ever not be redeemed. There's no way. They're not even allowed to sell their pasture land. They're not even allowed to sell it. It's the responsibility of the community around them to make sure that that never happens. And so there's protection for our fellow countrymen, right? If you acquire male and female slaves from pagan nations that are around you, if they have children, they're under. If they become they become your possession, and those are you can bequeath them and give them as an inheritance to your children. Okay, let's flip the page. We don't have slavery today, but in these days. It's, it's, it's the legacy, right? It's the generational blessing and these things. But with respect to your fellow countrymen, 
do not ever treat them with harshness, right? Even if they're on tough times, even if, even if they're on tough times and they come to you and they have to rely on you to get through those tough times and they want to come work for you in your house, they want to become part of your house as a servant because they're having such tough times they can't make it, it's for a season. It's not forever. It's for a season and it's not forever. And if I can help and if I get the advantage of buying the land and getting the harvest from that land, it's for a season, it's not forever, right? Levels the playing field. It goes all the way back, rolls it back, rolls it back. And the redeeming of the poor man, right? The redeeming of the stranger. Um, it doesn't, this whole thing sounds like love your neighbor to me, right? Help who we can, love our neighbor. Um, and so I'm kind of fast forwarding through this. <laughs> 2017 is the year of the Jubilee of Jubilees. Jesus is our Jubilee. He is our Jubilee, right? There's special seasons. I think this is a season we're going through, but Jesus is our Jubilee. He has redeemed us. He has rolled it back so that everything that our ancestors prayed for us, the, the, the blessings that flow through those generations of generations, the blessing, all the way back to Abraham are ours. They're ours, church. He's restored our ancestral homes. He has decreed the generational blessings of a father to his sons. We are his sons and daughters adopted. Mm -hmm. We call him Abba Father. And we must walk in it. We must carry out the statutes and ordinances, the law of love. To love him with everything that we have. And to love each other <coughs> just the same. Knowing who we are is part of the puzzle that unlocks the next blessing. Knowing what our purpose is to love one another, to love the poor among us, the foreigner, the stranger, to help the downtrodden, to help those that aren't like us, right? That's our purpose. We must, work, we must be about the Lord's work, redemption, setting the captives free. We sang this song tonight about, let the poor man say, let the blind man say, right? I wanna see blind eyes open. I want to pray, and I want to see blind eyes open. Mm -hmm. I want to take someone in need down and go fishing and get their taxes due so they don't lose their home out of a fish's mouth. You know, I, I love, <laughs> love is what makes Jesus' death on the cross and his resurrection possible. The love of God, right? Love always leads to faith. Love always leads to hope. And love always leads to joy. And I'm going to end with uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. The excellence of love. If I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but I have not love for others growing out of God's love for me, then I have become only a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal, just an annoying distraction. And if I have the gift of prophecy and I speak a new message from God to the people and understand all the mysteries and possess all of the knowledge... And if I have all sufficient faith so that I can remove the mountains, but do not have love reaching out to others, I am nothing. If I give all my possessions to feed the poor, and if I surrender my body to be burned, but I do not have love, it does me no good at all. Love endures with patience and serenity. Love is kind and thoughtful. It's not jealous or envious. Love does not brag. It's not proud or arrogant. It's not rude. It's not self-seeking, it is not provoking, nor overly sensitive or easily angered, not offended, right? It does not take into account a wrong endured. It does not rejoice at injustice, but rejoices with the truth when right and truth prevail. Yes. Love bears all things regardless of what comes, believes all things, looking for the best in each one, hopes all things, remaining steadfast during difficult times, and endures all things without weakening, without losing strength. Love never fails. I think that might be my favorite scripture. Love never fails. It never fades and it never ends. But as for prophecies, they will pass. As for tongues, they will cease. As for the gift of special knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. For our knowledge is fragmentary and it's incomplete. But when that which is complete and that which is perfect, when it comes, that which is incomplete and it partial will pass away. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I did away with childish things. 
for now, in this time of imperfection, we see in a mirror dimly a blurred reflection, a riddle, an enigma. But then, when the time of perfection comes, we will see reality face to face. Now I know in part just fragments, but then I will know fully, just as I have been known by God. And now there remains faith, abiding trust in God and His promises, hope, confident expectation of eternal salvation, love, unselfish love for others growing out of God's love for me. These three, the choicest graces, but the greatest of these is love. So I hope that you remember that you are blessed and highly favored. I hope that when you are living your day, you remember that and you look for God's blessings all around. Look for the beauty in everything and know that this is just a season. If this is a tough season for you, seasons change. We we flipped the calendar to a new month. We're getting ready for a new season. And the Lord's not done blessing you yet in 2017. So hang on. Yes. Hang on. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen.